hi again and here's the last at least for now in this series of videos talking about my lenses for my fs5 and fs7 there's one more lens in my box and it's this sigma 105 mm f 2.8 macro i think there's a more recent version of this too which has image stabilization this is the older one without now Many lenses include the word macro in their titles and it doesn't mean anything. In any case, you can get macro shots on many lenses just using close-up rings to move the lens away from the sensor and allow it to focus closer. You can even use a bellows like this so you can just wind the lens in and out using this knob. But when you use a zoom lens like this, weird stuff happens when you change the focal length when you're zooming, and it all gets really complicated. And typically for macro, you're looking down towards your subject too, so a heavy zoom will often creep out under its own weight so that you keep losing the focus. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, a prime will be much better. And this 105 is, of course, a prime. And being a true macro lens, it will reproduce at one-to-one -one without close-up rings or a bellows. And that's pretty close. One-to-one? -one? Well, it means that the image of the subject thrown by the lens onto the camera's sensor, the image will be the same size as the subject itself. So I could fill the frame with an average coin or a regular postage stamp and still have the image in sharp focus. And if you do want to go even closer, you can add close-up rings too. Focusing, well, the lens does have autofocus. And on a stills camera, handheld for photographing, say, butterflies or dragonflies, that would be really handy. But adapted on a Sony FS5 or FS7, nah, not so much. I'm more about mammals and birds anyway, and this lens, for me, mostly gets used for filming small mammals, usually in a set. That means a glass fish tank. So I'll be using a tripod, and so image stabilisation just isn't needed. And I can focus quickly and accurately manually, using my follow focus if I choose. Often, at this kind of magnification, you'll achieve the coarse focus by actually physically moving the camera towards and away from the subject, rather than by twiddling a ring. And then for finer focusing, this one has a focus throw of about 100 degrees, and that's plenty. The lens does telescope quite a bit as you focus, something to watch for because you may be working quite close to your subject, but that is just the nature of proper macro lenses. So that's a roundup of my lens collection. None of them were bought new, and all of them produce great images. The 150 to 500 cost me about £600 as I recall, but it's easily earned me many times that while I've had it. The others were all around £200 or so. Autofocus isn't great on any of them, but that's why I have a follow focus and things like focus peaking on my viewfinders and monitors. And even the best autofocus will sometimes just stubbornly decide to focus on the wrong thing in your frame. I mean, how is it to know after all? When I'm focusing for myself, I may not be as fast or as accurate as the latest autofocusing camera, but at least I usually know which object in the frame to aim for.